Hello. Hi everyone. Is everything working okay? I'm a little bit high up. Maybe my chair's a little bit higher. Hi everyone. Welcome to Live Things. Viscounts of the West Kingdom. There's the top of my head. That old thing. There we go. Can pretty much see me. Maybe I've just moved my chair closer and that's what it is. Hey, welcome to Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Are the things that I'm saying in sync with the mouth that is moving? All of that stuff. I think we can pretty much see the game and everything. Maybe we'll have space for all this stuff. AV okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. This is still preliminary stages of live streaming, but I think we are getting there. There's a there's a little video for opening now instead of just a picture. That's what this afternoon has been. <laughs> like I'll set I'll set the game up the night before so I'll I won't have to panic as much uh, just before the stream. Then go on to try and make a whole new video. So, this is Viscounts of the West Kingdom, the third, the final game in the West Kingdom trilogy. I haven't played the first one, I've played uh, Paladins, which is great solo. I think that's the only way I've played it. We've played uh, Viscounts two-player before, and I have been practicing gearing up for this stream, playing the solo variant, uh, and uh, getting beaten quite soundly as well. Uh, there are several different AIs in this game. Just switch to the AI cam. It's working. Uh, there are several different AIs that have a different uh, player board. Thanks, Rach. Rach is here. Marty should be here as well. If we press, if we press Marty cam, how well can we see Marty? He's moved a little bit, and he's in the darkness. But uh, that's because the actual room light isn't on. I think maybe I'll we'll have to try this with all the room light. Hey, hey, Grant from Australia. Oh wow. Was that 12 hours ahead? I'm at, I'm at a decent time in Australia. I'm trying to change up all of the times and things so I'm in good places, but clearly it's a decent time because you're here. So, in this game, we have our Viscounts. We are going to be rolling around here on a horse. We are going to be building things on the outside. We'll be recruiting helpers. We'll be doing stuff for the church to get these books. The churches are in charge of all of the books. Uh, there is the castle that we are trying to get our people inside and try and get majority in there and get rewards from that. And we can do some trading as well for different resources, all sorts of different things. There are a million ways that things can go in this game. It is very, very, very variable. Just keep the Marty cam. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put the game camera really small in the corner. We'll have the Marty cam bigger. I was thinking like one of the things I didn't get a chance to do is there should be an option of having a small Marty cam somewhere on the screen rather than, there he is. That's, that's just Rachel's chair and Rachel's dressing gown. He's for some, well, for not for some reason, it's comfortable and warm. He liked going there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good way to kind of keep him in one place. If, uh, if Rachel ends up going to the kitchen and uh, shakes some food or something like that, he'll be, he'll be off. But for now, he's here with us. So what is, uh, what is going on with the setup for this? It's, it's nearly set up. All we need to do is, we, we, we know kind of what the AI is going for. The AI is leaning towards the castle. They, the, the AI has a favourite thing, and it's, its favourite thing this game is the castle. That's what it's most likely to do. But, you know, it depends on how the cards come out and what it feels like doing on the day, doesn't it? Uh, whereas we're free to do whatever we like, but I have found in my practice game, specifically against this one, uh, that I got demolished from uh, kind of ignoring the castle a little bit because you get a ton of points if you're in the castle, especially if no one is trying to stop you being in the castle. If, if you're completely left alone, then uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great day for you, not so much for the other players. Uh, so the last thing that we need to do in setup, if I, if I got over... That doesn't take us to the right thing at all. <laughs> if, I, if we go to my choice, I'll have to click it. My button isn't set up. There we go. I need to delete that codenames duet scene. That always comes up. That was the, that was the bane of the Mage Knight stream that, that just kept appearing whenever I pressed a button that wasn't set up properly. There we go. I'll change the button. So I have a choice here of a citizen to take and a starting card. They are paired up. So I have my choice of Judith and actually both cards give me a lot of money, some slightly different resources. I will start off with two deeds and a debt. 
and I'll move up in my virtue track if I take this one. I guess uh, the the virtue and everything hasn't been uh, reset since last night. Uh, and Or I could go with Bertha, who would give me a little bit more money. Some stone and some gold, good for... Stone's good for buildings, gold is good for going in the castle. I would have one deed, one debt, and I would get to flip that debt straight away. So debt when you take it, this should actually be the other way around, shouldn't it? Debt when you take it is two minus points, but when you flip it, it's no minus points and a resource instead, a resource of your choice, which you could uh, use to boost any of your actions. So what do you reckon? What are you, what are you feeling? Are there any uh, Viscounts of the West Kingdom aficionados? Are you looking to learn the game? Are you looking to see how well I can do in it? Because, uh, yeah, I've, I've never, I've, I would never use me as a strategy guide, but hopefully we can get some good things going in here. So uh, the abilities of the people as well, you have to bear in mind that there are symbols. These are the actions that these particular people can help you do. And there are abilities as well. They've both got instant abilities that this lightning bolt symbol means. So when they are played, they will either get you. Judith can help you get rid of a citizen card or flip a deed or a debt. And uh, Bertha would let me move people around in the castle or choose uh, to move my virtue marker up that could help me out a lot as well. So that's the choice that I've got. And they also determine where you're going to start on the board. So the, the board has got these numbered locations on it. And if you can see zoomed out there, we do have uh, some zoomed in bits as well. You can see that the, there are five different board segments and they're all shuffled up when you set up. Uh, they have different sides depending on the player count, but then they're all shuffled about. So lot of, uh, of variation in this. So if I went with Judith, I would start in number one over here. And depending on where your Viscount is, a lot of the cards determine where you're allowed to move and stuff. It's a lovely game. Uh, so I am kind of... I'm leaning towards Bertha. I like having that... Uh... Hi, Geordie. You go for Bertha as well. The extra resource from the flip debt and because the AR will focus on the castle. Yeah, starting with a gold and Bertha is good for the castle as well. I think that is a good shout. So sorry, Judith. She will go off. But uh, the, the number of the card that we didn't take does determine where the AI starts. So he's going to start on space number one. Uh, and I need to start on space number seven. So let me pop those in. So one is there. I'll lie everything down so it's a little bit better for the overhead camera. And seven is there for me. Let's face the right way. We're going clockwise after all. And then the, the AI has already got all of its starting stuff. Its board determined what it started with. There's a couple of cards we take out of its deck. Uh, it starts off with one deed, one debt. Three gold and a stone, because gold is very helpful for building the castle, and that is what this particular AI board wants to do. So other stuff that I need, go back to the choice, I need two stone and a gold, so that's no problem. Two stone and a gold. And then, what is that, nine money? Not too shabby. I don't have the fancy gold money, unfortunately, but we'll, we'll make do with some cardboard, won't we? Uh, four, five... Six, seven, eight, nine. And then I need a deed and a debt. And I get to flip the debt straight away and take a resource. So I think if we're going to compete in the castle, maybe I should take another gold. So I'll start with a couple of that. Then I take Bertha. Bertha goes into my deck here. We have a set just set of citizen cards for our player color, which I believe are the same for all of the players. And then the, the one that we chose to start with gets shuffled up with all of the rest. And we're gonna draw three. That's your starting hand size. How's everything sounding, by the way? This is a new microphone. I don't think it's necessarily better, but there isn't an enormous microphone in the way of like my hands and the table. It's it's weird. I haven't had this. I had like a really, really cheap one of these right at the start of the channel. I haven't filmed like this for years and years now. It's, it's a new experience. So all that gets shuffled up. I need three of those cards to three. So I haven't started off with Bertha, but we've got the Financer, the Lender and the Squire. So in a solo game, you are the first player. 
And oh, I need uh, my my card that I got all of my stuff from. You flip that over, and it's a little extra player aid as well. So I am the start player. On your turn, it's all laid out here what a turn involves. There's a little hiss when I speak. Okay, maybe we're gonna have to change that. Uh, maybe that's the cables or something like that. Is it is it mild? Is it okay? I can't hear. Uh, it's not outputting any sound to me. It could be the way things are plugged in and stuff. Because this, uh, this arrived... <laughs> I should have stuck with the other camera for today. This, this arrived about 20 minutes ago. So it's all, uh, it's all new for this. So yes, on your, on your turn, this is what you are going to do. How, how hissy is it? On, on the hiss scale, it's okay. Good. Yeah, because there's, there's a noise gate cutting everything out when I stop speaking. But there must be a little bit of built-in hiss in there. Better not be much, Road. You're meant to be good at microphones. So, the first thing that we do is move everyone along. In the future, we will have cards on here. They will slide along and eventually slide off into the discard pile, which I will need to be out of the way of, actually, when it, uh, when it actually starts existing. Uh, for now, we do have some symbols built into our board. I need to choose a card now. And the card is going to determine a few different things. The coin value here is for buying new cards and stuff, but it's also when you play the card, it determines how many spaces you're going to move. So I can move one, two or three spaces based on these characters. You can't move less, but you can pay gold to move more. So with my riches, I could really afford to move loads. Uh, the symbols help you out with the action that you can take. Uh, you can take four different main actions trading, building, uh, going into the castle, and uh, churchy books. And uh, you choose between those. The symbols on your cards and all the other cards that are in your player area are going to help you with those, uh, those actions. The more icons, the better, really. And the bottom is an ability. So the squire's just got nothing. The lender has got an ability. I can flip a deed or a debt, but only when the lender gets pushed out into the discard pile. So the X there is the same as the X when it gets discarded. So that is a good ability, but not for a little while. And the Financer, as soon as I play the Financer, because it's got the lightning bolt symbol, I can discard another card, because my hand limit's three. If I know I'm not going to play another one of my cards, I can get cycling through my deck. And I would also get myself two money, which I don't necessarily need right now. If I zoom out, where am I going to be? I'm going to be on the top of the board, aren't I? So if I play the lender to do some trading, I can only move one space. Trading happens on the top of the map. There's two kind of circles that you can move between. Uh, so trading, you have to be in one of these top spaces where you can see these trading symbols. So if I moved one space forward and to do some trading, I could pay three trading symbols to get rid of a card from my deck to just uh, get it out of the game entirely. I don't particularly care about that now. My financer, who also uses trade symbols, I could move three away, so I could go one, two, three, if I really wanted to be there. Exchange for some stone, one, two, three. Exchange some symbols to start getting some gold. But I think my squire does let me move two spaces and then get some castle action on the go. So it would have to be in this quadrant, two spaces is always going to move me into this quadrant. And it's where I could start getting some people down. Maybe that's what I want to make a start on before the, the AI starts uh, encroaching on it. But of course, you know, early on, you've got trading symbols built on your board. Maybe you want to do trading while all of that exists there still. So we could... We could move a load with the financer. Because if, if the AI goes in the castle, I could potentially kick out his people in the castle if I go afterwards as well. It's just I would like to move more and get more gold if I'm going to be doing a lot of castle-y stuff. Yeah, let's, let's take advantage of the fact that we've got some trading symbols built onto the board to begin with, I think. I'm going to play the Financer, so she's got a three, so I need to move one, two, three spaces over here. Oh, I'm facing the wrong way now, aren't I? And uh, I can then take my action. So another option that you have, you see I'm a little bit zoomed out, 
Hi, Janeway. Monty says hi too. Is he still there? There he is. He's starting to curl back a little bit. Maybe he'll show you his belly later on. The way he, he slowly, slowly rotates when he's comfortable. Uh, so then you have the option, once you've moved, of discarding the card that is in the segment that you're in. So this scoundrel here can be recruited. That is one of my things later in the turn. I can recruit the card. Only costs one. Criminals are wild. Oh, they're wild guys. Criminals are wild symbols. They can count as anything, but um, they can get you some. They can get you corruption as well, which can be bad. Uh, so I could discard this scoundrel for one money. It's the cost of the card to begin with, and I would get another symbol, which I think I'm going to do because on my board I've got one, two, three trading symbols. I get a gold for every two trading symbols. So if I paid the one to discard the scoundrel, that would give me four symbols, which gets me two gold. So that would be a little bit better, I think. There is something else I have to do, though. Uh, I get the ability that's in here. So this is discard a card. Am I going to use the lender? I don't think I'm going to use the lender. I think I want to be... I think I want to be castling a little bit after this. I think I'm going to discard the lender. So the, the scoundrel is just out of the game now. I've discarded her out of the game. And uh, the lender just goes into my discard pile and uh, nothing happens from her because her ability happens when she uh, falls off the edge of my player board. And OK, so I've got four symbols. I've taken my two gold. I've done a trading action. I then have the option of buying a card. So buying the card in the segment that I'm in. So this would be a traveler would help me with some more trading symbols. We zoom in on him uh, and uh, has an ongoing ability Two trading symbols can buy me uh, a cross, a church symbol, which helps you getting these books. So if I wanted to go for the books as well, uh, I do have a lot of cards with those trading symbols on. That could be a nice way of doing it. It's only two money. I am tempted by that. We do want to focus on the castle, but probably something else as well. I think I'm going to grab that traveler. So that's going to be two money. I've kind of, I've got so much money as well that I'm quite happy with doing that. Hi, Aaron. Uh, which of the West Kingdom games are your favourites? Now, I still haven't played Architects. I'm tempted to get hold of it now because the the multiplayer part, as as cool and different as the taking the other workers prisoners uh, sounds, and I have been told relentlessly that uh, it's uh, not mean. Whether it's mean or not, I know it's something that Rach and I wouldn't enjoy. Uh, so I didn't. I wasn't very interested in it. And uh, I think Raiders of the North Sea had a bit of um, meanness in it, and so I'd kind of. Not written them off, just kind of been like, oh, maybe these games aren't for me. And then eventually enough people told me to get hold of Paladins of the West Kingdom for solo. I got hold of it, played it. It's great. I don't think I've played it two player yet still. Uh, and then so Viscounts came along. I think I haven't played Viscounts as much yet. And so it might still just be in that exciting uh, new glory stage. But I am feeling that out of the two, Viscounts is my favorite right now. Who knows though? Maybe maybe we'll do uh, architects, uh, paladins soon, and then maybe architects. And, and they've got they've got a big expansion now. The thing that I really like is that I have I haven't played it, but you can tie all of it together, and there is an an expansion that makes all of them co-op, and you can play through like a campaign of all three games. I do really like the sound of that, uh, but uh, yeah, so I haven't played all three yet. Looking forward, and the first one, Architects has got an expansion now as well, hasn't it? Anyway, a, a, like separate to that uh, Tome Saga, playing them all together. So yes, I've recruited. Then on your player board, the next thing is, has there been a collision? A collision happens when these markers have met. No, that hasn't been yet. And then draw back up to your hand size, which at the start of the game is three cards. So I've got an Abbot there that can help me get the books, a Labourer that can help me do some building. Uh, Architect Solo is fun. Yeah, I, th I think I get the feeling just from these two, and probably with the North Sea um, Saga as well, the Solo is incredibly well thought out, and they are great for simulating something to play against, simulating an AI, AI to play against, that is a much simpler system that, you know, I not to put down any of the more complex ones, I, I'd love, I've gone on about just uh, recently in the Kanban EV uh, tutorial where um, David Tortzi's solo variants are 
they, there's a little bit of a hurdle to get through at the start to learn the symbols and maybe the things that they do. But once you've got over that, it's all fantastic. Uh, whereas I think that the, the two West Kingdom ones I've played anyway, their AI versions have that kind of interaction and feeling that you're playing against something and competing against something that is uh, as good as you and you can bump the difficulty up uh, just the same. But I would say kind of the, the, the barrier to entry, the barrier to learning isn't really there. That's it's it's a couple of extra pages in the rule book. The rule books are quite um, text heavy, but uh, they 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 do a, a good job of learning you the game. Although our first game with uh, Viscounts actually, our, our only two player game so far, didn't go very well at all. I think it was just an unlucky combination of certain strange powers and stuff that weren't um, for some reason we couldn't find the answers to in the rule book. But I, I haven't found that since I've come back to it a few months on. Oh, it would be cool to see the whole series of Raiders of the North Sea. Uh, yeah, it, it would really. C Circadia First Light, I've seen a few mentions of that. Maybe I should uh, uh, look out for that as well. What's the other thing? Red Cathedral is another one I've seen a lot about. Nothing to do with these games, uh, but one that I need to keep an eye out for. Capturing isn't that mean because it's the way to get back your workers. Yeah, that, that's what I've been told, but I don't think we would ca want to capture each other, even if it is just like a fundamental part of the game. I'd like to do the, the whole thing as well, especially when they are in these groups like this. And even if there is um, meanness like in Raiders of the North Sea, if it's solo, I don't, I don't care. It's just that uh, Rach and I are never going to do it uh, to each other. Uh, Geordie, top three, Paladins, Architects, and then Viscounts. They're all enjoyable games. Mm. Architects sits right in the middle. Oh, and, and with the expansion. That's the thing, if I got it, would I have to get the expansion? Well, I don't have to, of course. I, I would, I'm very interested at playing the co-op version. I really like when, uh, when good meaty Euro games get co-op transformations. They work fantastically well with Oleon, uh, with uh, CO2 Second Chance. Uh, Gugong is amazing. Yes, I haven't played Gugong for quite a while now, but it was a fantastic game. So that is all of my turn. I've got all of my cards. I can be, well, in a multiplayer game, I will be thinking about what I'm going to be doing next. But for now... We need to help out the AI because he can't do anything for himself. You just need to draw his top card and pop it in here. And don't worry about these symbols just yet. You just go with the flow of play over here. So he's going to get himself a resource. When the AI gets a resource, you look in this table here. He wants gold until he's got six. So that's the game with three. So he's going to take a gold. Then he is going to move his Viscount one space clockwise. He always stays on the outside. That doesn't matter to him, the inside outside for the particular actions. He, can, he will always stay on the outside and he can take any action that he is allowed to do by his cards. Then what does it say? He is going to try and build first. Can he build? Well, let's look at the building symbols at the top here. He's got one, two building symbols. The buildings over here, you can see at the top the costs for them. It's seven, five, and three to build something. He can afford to build because he's got two building symbols and a stone. You can spend stone to basically give you an extra building symbol for each one. So he's got three. He builds left to right. So he will build the leftmost building and he will pop it on the board in the leftmost space clockwise, and he gets abilities just the same as I would. So for popping a building here, he gets to flip a deed or a debt. He flips the one that he has flipped the least of. I believe if it's a tie, he flips a debt. Am I right on that? Uh, is it possible to solo with Tome Saga? I don't know, actually, because that would be uh, potential for, for a stream as well be uh, good for me and Rach to do. Because I, I could do two-player games uh, two-handed. I did that with Dale and Merchant. I think that unless we do a game where it's like roll and write, or maybe I was thinking of doing something like Cubitos where I could play against the, the audience. Uh, someone can collectively uh, be, the, be the voice of the audience and take in the votes for actions and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to check this tie thing. I would assume it's possible. Maybe you'd have to be two-handed or something. Not that you would need two hands. You... That's just any game, isn't it? Uh, but you might have to play two people. Uh, when they are tied, they will flip a debt. Uh, I don't have a nice space that that can be without me needing to 
<laughs> Magna Storm, yes. Mag Magna Storm needs to come sooner or later. I need to make a list with these things. Magna Storm, uh, Architects, Red Cathedral. Uh, so, he's done all these things now. He's worked his way down the list. This is basically a, he will build. If he can't build, he'll try and do his favourite thing, which is uh, the castle. If he can't do his favourite thing, he will get a debt and flip a deed. There we go. That is his turn. So we can come back to me now and my situation. What's going on then? Well, if I wanted to get a start on yeah, putting people in the castle, I'm going to have to spend a lot of gold to do. Because uh, I'm not going to have many symbols. So whatever I put in now is going to move along the financer. And that is going to cover up the building symbol, the inherent building symbol I've got on my player board there, or the church symbol. I haven't got any more trading ones to spend. So let's see, if I went to put people in the castle here, I would have to move two spaces, so that would move me to the next segment along, whether I, I would have to go in the middle to do the, the castle, so I can go one, two, that's no problem. And so the, the people I put in the castle would go into this segment and eventually go up and spread out. You'll see how all that works. But to put people in the castle, depending on your symbols, determines how many of your people you get to put in there. So with one symbol, I would get to put just one person in there, which isn't ideal, really. With three symbols, I could put two people in. But the ideal would be five symbols. So I could put three people in there. That would be all of my gold, though, to do that. Let's see, can I, if I paid three to discard the artisan, it would help me with building and maybe trading if I wanted to do that. So maybe I should do building instead and help boost other actions. But I would only have, I would have some more building symbols with the stone that I've got. I think, let's, do, let's stick with the squire. So the squire is going to move me two spaces. So that's going to be one, two. There we go. I'm on the bottom of the board now. And I am going to spend... So I've got one symbol, two, three. And I'm going to pop... Or do I just spend it all? Fleet dice. Another one I haven't played, actually. I'd like to get hold of fleet dice. It is very good. Maybe we just go the whole hog, spend it all, and get three people in there and get some benefits. Yeah, I'm just going to spend all four of my gold right now. I grab three of my citizens, and let's switch to the castle view. They all go in this uh, segment here. Geordie thinks I should spend it all. We agree. So, when, when this happens, now you check. Have you got three of your citizens in one segment? of the castle, I have one goes this way, one goes this way, and one goes forward. So it makes it a bit, you've got some in, in place here to get more than three next time. And if you start filling up the castle with people, as the <laughs> AI can quite easily do, uh, this can all start to chain and ricochet off each other. So the one that has moved in here gets me to virtue. When this happens, you move your virtue marker two along. And it's not going to happen for a little bit yet, but once these collide and there is a collision, if I cause the collision, I get what's on top. If I'm very, very virtuous, I can get more and more deeds that are worth more points, but less money. If I am quite uh, corrupt, I will move to this side. I'll get more debts that are negative points, but can be turned into neutral points and resources. But I'll get more money because... The corrupt uh, will find their way to money, of course. And when I cause a collision, everybody else gets something as well, based on uh, how criminal they're being, uh, how, uh, how full of criminals their enterprise is at the point that we collide. But that's not going to happen just yet. So I played a card, I moved, I didn't discard anything, I did a castle action. I can now recruit the artisan that is here with me. So it would be three money, it would be more trading symbols, it would be another building symbol. Hmm. I don't really know, I would like to maybe recruit the diplomat. We come to the bottom a little bit, a little bit later, because I want more 
castle symbols to try and keep doing this. You can't just focus on just one thing, though, I don't think. You have to spread out a little bit. But I don't think the artisan is going to help me particularly right now. So I'm not going to buy him. Is there a collision? No. Is there... Oh, I draw, draw up to three now. So I would like to have discarded some of these cards so I'd have more chance to get some building because there we go, I haven't got uh, any building symbols there. But it'll be okay. It'll all work out. So that is my whole turn. We can switch to the bot now. His card slides along just like mine would. The boards slide along very, very easily on this uh, table mat. And this one comes in. So nothing. When this happens, he discards the card from the place that he is in right now. Where is he? There he is. Oh, that's uh, unfortunate. That's the, the diplomat I had my eye on. So <laughs> it just hap so happens that he's uh, messed me about there. Then he's going to move four spaces. One, two, three, four to be right at the top. And what's he going to try and do? Build again. I don't... Oh, he's got one, two building symbols, so he's not going to build. Minimum you need is three for the cheap thing. Uh, so he is going to flip a deed or a debt. Uh, the only thing he's got unflipped is a deed. So he will flip that over. It goes from one point to three points. And then he gets himself a resource. Has he got six gold yet? No, he's got four. So he gets himself another gold. Rise to power. I don't think I've played Rise to power. A little game. Well, this is all about giving games some love. Hopefully more and more games as things come along. Oh, I should always say, this is uh, where the live streams don't have the polish and practice just yet. Quick drink. That all of this live stuff is only possible, and pretty much every video that I make, apart from maybe the Kickstarter ones, are only possible because of the support of my patrons. It's down there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, patreon.com forward slash slicker drips if you can contribute anything every little helps uh, to keep all of this going to give me the time here to be live streaming and stuff for the five hour mage night streams late at night and stuff it's all thanks to patrons and massive thanks to everyone who uh, is a patron always uh, almost say thank you to patreons so now it's my turn again so there's not going to be any more castle action well there could be well, it can't be, actually, because I haven't got any gold. So let's put that out of our minds. We could do some trading. Let's see the journeyman. If we look at my uh, player board. The journeyman, I would have three trading symbols for, not very much, and I would have to move two spaces. So I could move to... The only place would be this space down here, where I could get myself a stone for every two symbols, helped a bit by a scoundrel. Oh, the scoundrel could help me put people in the castle. I would only be able to put one person in the castle, though, still. Not very much, really. I wouldn't be able to get a book. I don't have any ink. Maybe I should do some building, since I have some stone available to me. I could move two spaces, which would be to get to the top. There, there. I would have one building symbol. Two if I discarded the scoundrel. Discard a stone to get a third, and I could put a basic building down here, recruit someone or get rid of someone from my deck. Maybe that's something to do. It's not stacking up symbols that I necessarily want to do on my board just yet. And it's not putting people in. Like, the advantage of putting the journeyman is, in is that he's got a nice ability that will happen when he gets pushed out there. And I haven't put anyone in there with one of those abilities yet. So I think I'm going to go for him. Hi, Willem. Glad you could catch a live stream. I'm going to try and keep shaking the times up so that uh, eventually everyone in the world will have seen one or had the opportunity to see one. Hi, Paul. Lighting looks good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, messing about with, well, all sorts of equipment, but especially lighting lately. I've been asking Paul for his lighting layouts. It's not worked so well on the AI camera yet. I need to turn the, the thing off there. It's a bit fuzzy, but hey, we're not there all the time. We're on this bit. So I am playing the journeyman into there. That is going to move me two spaces. If I want to do trading, I need to be back on the top. So that's going to put me there. Although, of course, I can, if I want to, spend gold to move further spaces. So if I wanted to get money instead, or maybe inkwells to help with the books, or even gold to help with my castling again, it would be three gold to go and get some castling, though. So I don't think we should spend that. So what have I got? Three symbols. Yeah, and being here, 
I can... Three symbols and being here I can discard the scoundrel. So yes, I'll, I'll stick here. I will pay one to use the scoundrel's ability and the scoundrel lets me discard a card. So maybe the two things that I do is, are going to be building and castling. Maybe that's what I'll focus on. So I'll discard the abbot. I discard something thanks to the ability there. I'm using the criminal as a trader. So I've got four trading symbols, which gets me two stone. Because it's two trading symbols for a stone. So I'm going to be able to do a nice build at some point soon. AI is using fuzzy logic. Exactly. Oh, so now I've done my action. I get to buy a card. I could recruit the courier. <laughs> my deck is starting to get full of... Um, full of traders, basically, which I can use, can't I, when my, when my Traveller finally comes out that I bought. I'll be able to use trading symbols as uh, crosses, but we've kind of uh, slipped into a different direction now. Do I want to buy the Courier? Got a nice special ability, get rid of a card, or discard two cards. And I'll get to shuffle my deck, which can help get these people in sooner and make me a bit more virtuous. I don't think I do. I'm a bit worried because I haven't really recruited any cards, but I'm not going to recruit any this time either. So back to my player board. I'm going to draw two cards. Here we go. Here's Bertha. So I'll finally have two castle symbols. And where would Bertha take me? Three. One, two, three. If I spent one to move extra, I could be back up here. And the scoundrel's got a criminal symbol. I could discard her to at least get a couple more people in the castle, which would be helpful. But it's not my turn yet. Back to the AI. A little drink. So. Move his stuff along. And what's he going to do? He is going to move his virtue marker along. He is going to move himself three spaces along. Where is he? One, two, three. And then he is going to try a castle action, which he's going to be able to do a quite a hefty one, isn't he? So he's got one, two symbols, three, four, five, six, seven. So he can't quite spend eight to put four people in there, but he can spend five, two on his board, three, four, five from the gold. And that's going to get him three people in here. So when, when do we check for kicking me out? Let me just get my uh, cheat sheet for doing uh, some castling. And by that I mean the rules. Uh, so yeah, place your workers, place your workers after you've done all of your movements. After you've finished all of your movements, then you check to see how many people are in the castle. So he is over here. So he's going to be putting people in this sector. And he's not going to bump me actually, because first he does the same as I did. That way, that way and forward, so he's going to get himself a stone and an inkwell. So he doesn't have the choice of what to get there. And then we check to see, have, uh, are there more than three workers in any of the first or second tier segments? No, there aren't. So there's no bumping. Uh, you, can, you can bump your own if you want to as well, because them being in there at the end of the game are with points, according to the tier that they're in. Uh, if they get bumped, you will get some money or you'll get some virtue and some resources depending on where you were bumped from. So depending on the situation, maybe you'd even want to bump yourself. So that is the AI's full turn. It's back over to me, which is always good, isn't it? So what have we got? Oh, uh, we've got Bertha, haven't we? Oh, and Bertha's ability straight away lets you move someone in the castle, left or right, from a first tier section, only from a first tier. Could that help me out though? And, or get a virtue. I think we should play Bertha before the squire gets pushed all the way out. Any plans on doing a solo for Ginkopolis? Yes, that has been requested at some point recently already. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was you. <laughs> I'm just uh, repeating this back to you. But yes, that has been, uh, that seed has been planted in my mind. I don't know if it'll be next week. I don't know if, um, well, Vicant is going pretty well. And I'm panicking that I hadn't uh, prepared enough. But um, yeah, we need to dust off Ginkopolis. This is one I haven't played for years. I haven't got the new fancy edition, but as far as I can tell, 
The only difference is fancier meeples, I think. The, the, the actual gameplay and stuff is exactly the same. So my old version should do. Played it with two, it's so smooth. I could, I won't do it right now because it would take time, but I could, I could look in. When we played it last would have been when I was doing BG stats, which is years ago now, but it's probably been I don't know, four years since we played Ginkopolis. It's I've got fond enough uh, kind of feeling about it that I've kept it around, but yeah, I can't remember that much about it. So I could just take some virtue here, or I could move myself in the castle. So if I'm going to be doing castle, Bertha moves me three. So let's see where Bertha's going to put me. I wanted to be up there with the scoundrels in time. One, two, three. So spend a gold to move, or spend a money to move an extra space. So I'm at the scoundrel, which I can discard for an extra symbol. Oh, is the solo mode new? So my version won't have solo in. Are there, are there components to do the solo mode? Or is it just uh, rules that I could look up? Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's the excuse I need to get the new version. So I'm over there. I'm going to be over there. I can discard the scoundrel. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to be able then to put two people in here. So I don't really need to move anyone left or right because there's already going to be three people in here for the move up. So I think I'm going to take a virtue instead. Pump that up. So then I am paying. Yeah, I haven't really earned any gold, have I? I've, I've spent a lot of my starting riches to discard the scoundrel to get my third building symbol, two from here, one from the scoundrel's wild criminal symbol. I can discard something. I think I'm going to discard oh, my trader. The ongoing ability, uh, when, you tr when you can use trading symbols just for money instead of what the normal trading thing is. Or is that when you trade, you get a money? I'm not sure, actually, no. Uh, so I can discard something. Do I want to discard something? Laborer, I do have a lot of stone. I building was going to be one of the next things that I did. Maybe, maybe I get rid of the trader though. Although I'm going to have like four symbols right on here, aren't I? Good way of getting money wherever I am on the map. I think I'm going to discard the laborer because we've got plenty of building things in here. Hi Tobias, my account's best game. If you're a fan. You can you can uh, put me right on this. I'm sure I'm going to be doing things wrong, but it is time for you're just in time for putting some more of my subjects into the castle. With three symbols, it's just going to be two, but that is enough to pop one either side and one going forward. So I can hire someone anywhere on the board for free, or I can take somebody out of my deck. Uh, it, or my hand or my draw pile, so not the discard pile. So I've only got the trader and a mystery person that's in my draw pile. Is there someone I particularly want to hire though? Let's have a look. What am I going to be going into? The miner, a little bit of building, good at getting virtue and some virtue when he's hired. The bishop, when you take, oh, good at getting a load of symbols to get the books with, but gets you corruption every time you get books and gets you a debt when you take him. Artisan, a bit of two things. Hi Andre, morning. Hopefully I'm not too early. Hopefully a, a nice time. The, str the stream's next week. I'm not sure what times they're just going to be yet, but uh, at least one of them is going to be at 3 p.m. rather than 2. Uh, so hopefully in a bit of a better time for the US. But I know that if you're on the West Coast, this is all crazy early. Uh, and uh, I don't really know a way around that apart from maybe a, a weekend stream or something. Because, yeah, we're like, we're like nine hours apart at the moment. When in doubt, get the most expensive one. That is a good tip. Uh, hi, Joel. Oh, yes. Everyone give the, give the stream a thumb. We need to get around YouTube's inscrutable algorithms and get people watching. They'll watch it eventually, though. The live streams have uh, gotten... I, th I think all of them have gotten a lot more views than the playthroughs at the moment. Maybe it's just because they're shiny new live things. Disappointed I don't have any mint Viscounts. Oh, Paul. Are they the... Are they the are they those green foil things they used to get? I remember weird, minty, old lady chocolates. Keep away from mint things. Uh, 
It's 9.45 for hour, and that's not, that's not too bad. That's not too early. But say, like, what is it, about... It's about 5 a.m. on the West Coast. Uh, there will be more live streams. I'm going to stick to this for now. Like, nobody... Nobody has um, expressed any disappointment that's there. Because there, there are still playthroughs coming, aren't there? Fields of All went up yesterday. Uh, Anno 1800 will go up next week. Uh, there are still playthroughs being filmed. But rather than kind of pushing myself and going a bit uh, stir-crazy, trying to get all the things done, the most time-consuming thing, the, mo the most time-consuming part of this entire process is editing and live. I know there are gaps sometimes. Sometimes there are these times where I am talking to uh, everyone in chat that might not be great for people watching it later on, but hey, you might uh, enjoy that still. But I think a lot of the editing stuff, you know, I can do all of these cuts and stuff. If I am swish enough with remembering where the buttons are, I think it is pretty slick. I'm really impressed at the moment and uh, really enjoying doing the live stuff. Oh, mint and orange. Oh, that sounds horrible. I don't really like minty things. Got uh, bad taste memories of After Eights, but I am uh, one of the fussiest eaters about. Uh, what does the miner do? The miner. Hi, Michael, by the way. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for being here, just in general. Uh, the miner, very good at making me quite virtuous. Uh, so, oh, yes, I still haven't had a person. Remember that. Remember that I haven't had a person yet. Rainy and grey out. It's actually, well, I think it was drenched this morning, but it's uh, kind of, it's stayed grey and grim, the, the British way. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're used to, really. Andre, you play this once at two players. Yeah, it is. Well, like, like I said earlier, our two-player experience was, uh, for me anyway, maybe I was just a bit uh, annoyed at that time, but I remember being... Just, just with symbols that were coming up and stuff, there were some things I had to keep looking up on BoardGameGeek. I haven't had that experience since, so I don't know if that was just an unlucky game or just wrong side of the bed that day. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been really enjoying it uh, in my practices and now as well. Oh, do you want to see some Marty Cam? Is he still there? There he is. Yeah, well, well, what if I switch to Marty Cam while I'm just talking and then everyone watching back can just look for the bits where it's Marty and skip past if they don't want the, the chat bits? Yes, Willem is right. Live has the added value of people uh, correcting me when I'm wrong, but also helping me out as well when I get stuck. Like, the, the help was vital in the Mage Knight stream as well. Yes, Paul, live aficionado, been doing... A lot of the live stuff for a long time now. He's just heard me moving around in my chair and nearly <laughs> had a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, I've got this stream deck in here, which you can't see. I found out that you can put custom pictures on the stream deck, Paul. So instead of it saying Marty on my stream deck now, it's just a picture of uh, Space Marty. There's a, you, you missed it, Paul, but I've got a little video for my starting soon instead of a picture now. Oh, things are getting there. There's still, it still ends up with me, with me doing all of this just before the stream starts. I like deciding to put a new microphone on just before the stream starts. It all still starts in a blind panic, but hey, that, uh, that'll get easier, right? Uh, but yeah, the stream deck is amazing. Marty, yeah, <laughs> he is, uh, Glass Marty's gotten uh, a bit bigger lately. Yes, Paul's live streams are great too, especially when he has that, uh, when he has that Slicker Drips guy on. They're the best ones. Yeah, the, the rewinding when I get things wrong can all happen in real time rather than me just muddling through it on my own and trying desperately to remember when I'm filming. Oh, what did I do? What, what have I just done wrong? Where was I? What did I just say? For people to help. <laughs> yeah, Marty is not a good rules assistant. Marty is not very fussed if things uh, go well in the board game or not. He has been a little bit... Um, more expressive than usual. He's usually curled up in a ball with his head away from the the camera. So he's been he's been a little more giving today. So where am I? I need to take a person, don't I? Can we see the people? So sculptor helped me with building a lot. Miner helped me with building a little virtue a lot. And the, I've I haven't even done one building yet, but I've got a lot of stone, so that's kind of made me think maybe I'm going to do some building. But I haven't really uh, done anything towards that yet. Artisan, bit of building, bit of merchanting, 
let me flip a deed or a debt. Let's see, I do like the idea of being very virtuous. And if the AI starts putting a load of criminals in, that could uh, help me out. If I am going to be the, the law-abiding one and he's going to be all criminal. But the miner does only cost two. Whereas the, the sculptor is a fantastic builder because uh, only one time you can use stone as if it was two building symbols as, instead of just one. And that's the whole time the sculptor is in your player area. So if I got the sculptor, I'd probably really want to go into buildings. Yeah, let's, let's go for the sculptor. So I can discard a card. I'm going to discard the trader just because I can then shuffle it all up and be more likely to get my sculptor or the other card that I bought. And I can still buy, oh, or if I got the bishop for free, I could still potentially buy maybe a nice cheap card that comes underneath him. What am I going to go for though? Buildings, books, maybe it's too late already to go for books, even though we're not that many turns into it, are we? No, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to buy the bishop. I've done the action. We've moved up in the castle. There are no areas in the castle with a load of people in. There hasn't been a collision. Draw back up to three cards. So I've got my thief there, my criminal. Zoom in a little bit. There's my criminal. Now when you play a criminal, you get a corruption. You move your black marker up. But while the... Oh, it's, it's for every criminal you can see as well. So if you get a load of criminal cards, you can potentially... This is just skipping along, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, if you can flip those debts, there is something that I haven't really talked about yet in the deeds and debts. If we go to this part here. So this is where they come from. Everything from setup didn't uh, come from these, but there's 12 on each in a one player game. I got that right? Yes, there's 12 on each. And these are the triggers for the end game. When a certain amount of deeds or debts, or maybe both, have been uh, taken out. And they, they're like a crossover thing. So if the game ends because all the debts ran out, there is majority scoring for who has the most flipped deeds in a, in a two-player game, which technically this is. Uh, it's uh, 12 for first place, 4 for second place. So a big swing. Uh, and similarly, if deeds run out, it's whoever had the most flipped debts. So it's a nice little push-pull thing that if you see one pile getting uh, depleted really quickly and the end of the game is on its way, you want to try and get and flip cards from the other pile for that majority scoring and for all the benefits that those cards give you as well. So what cards am I drawing? We've had a quick shuffle. Here we go. A card that I bought is coming in. Uh, just three cards, yep. And there's my trader that I discarded. There we go. So that is it for my turn. What is uh, Castle going to do? So first card gets discarded and slide them along and he is going to flip a deed or a debt he hasn't got one so does he just skip that uh, i assume he just uh, oh no yeah oh i think this is it anytime they gain a card flip but have no cards to flip that's what this means over here so you when they get benefits that you would normally be very happy with they kind of ignore them and have other benefits instead Oh, it tells me they're the priority for them too. I didn't need to look that up earlier. So if they have nothing to flip, or they're discarding a card or moving in the castle, they instead get a virtue. So move his virtue along again. Then two movements. One, two. Then he is going to try and do some... Oh, come on, let's get the name of it and stop calling it books and stuff. <laughs> Transcribing manuscripts. Hi, Mark. Thank you for joining us. We are... We're, we're on the way to being the best uh, Viscounts around here. So let's see, how many symbols has he got for that? One, two, and an inkwell. And if we pop in the area that he's in, the book that he wants, remember he doesn't need to be on the bottom to do any of these actions. It takes three crosses to get this card, so he is going to get uh, that. He's going to spend his inkwell as the third thing. And the benefit from that is a resource. Look at his resources. He spent loads of his gold, so when given the choice, he is going to take gold. And that's it. That's his action. So, it's back to me to make a decision now. Yeah, not flipping is very virtuous. So, I have my thief. If I played my traveller now, I would have five trading symbols and... Hmm... 
I would have five trading symbols and I could use every two trading symbols as a cross instead for transcribing manuscripts if I wanted to do that. Because they, they could as well. Getting sets of them is worth loads of points at the end of the game. If you get three of a colour, you also get one of these uh, permanent bonus cards as well, depending, and, and some points for the end, as well as there's points available for uh, having the most people in the centre of the castle, which we haven't quite got to yet. Is, is the Noble AI harder? I was trying to look in the forums because I, um, I watched Paul's playthrough where they were talking about difficulties of the AI. And then I saw one post from Shem saying that, well, in, in, uh, Shem's one of the designers of the game, as well as, oh, don't forget, Sam McDonald, S. McDonald, S. J. McDonald. Uh, and uh, Shem Phillips was saying that, in, according to him anyway, they were all balanced to be about the same. So I don't know. Is, is he hard? He, he uh, thrashed me last night when I had a practice game of it, so we'll see. Nem and Cleric are arguably the hardest. So we'll see. Let's, let's try and do it this time. So let's see. I could go for a book. Or I could just do some trading. Two spaces would put me... Let's see. If I'm going to do trading, I need to come back to the top. So I could flip. With four symbols, I could flip something. But I would be wasting my kind of excess. I could move and get some money. I think getting a book wouldn't be a bad idea. And that's ongoing, while I've got loads of these trading symbols in there. So maybe I'll do that. So, if I played my Traveller, I've got to move two spaces, and I can discard the Courier, who you can't, can't quite see. Discard the Courier here, that's got three trading symbols! I don't need loads more though to do the cross. So maybe I don't want to do the cross. <laughs> We could just ignore the Traveller for now. One. Oh no, I can't go up there. There isn't an arrow there. Uh, so it is one, two. I could pay an extra one to go there. This could be a load of money. What about this? Pay a money to go one extra step. Because then, and pay an extra money to discard the Courier, who lets me shuffle my deck. <gasps> I shuffled my deck, didn't I? When you shuffle your deck, this is something I always forget until the last minute. When you shuffle your deck, if you have any criminals, you get a corruption. If you don't have any criminals, like me, uh, you get a virtue. So I should have gotten a virtue when I shuffled my deck. So yeah, an extra money to move and an extra money for the courier. And I have gotten myself two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trading symbols. That's eight cash. And I get to shuffle my deck again. So two, four, six, eight. And I could buy the peddler if we're just going into trading symbols, apparently. Uh, see, I discarded, I shuffled my deck again, which I don't particularly want to do, but I've got no criminals. So another virtue. And then, getting to the point where the lights are making it really hot in here. These lights are roasting. So I've done that. I've done the action. I can buy a card. So if I wanted to, I could buy the peddler. Got all of his trading symbols. And while he's out, uh, when there is a collision, I get an inkwell. I like the sound of him. I like the cut of his jib. I'm going to buy him. I told you to stop making noises, phone. Oh, Quality Beast is live. Makers of uh, Seize the Bean for a German stream. Not that I want anyone to leave here. W watch their replay later. Uh, so, I've done all of that. I haven't got a collision just yet. I am uh, one step away from a collision. Uh, the lender comes out. Not too excited about that. Although, it's more, it's more trading symbols. And the Traveller is out there now. I can use his ability on a future turn. I am pretty happy about what is happening. So, AI's turn again. They got a criminal, which means they get a corruption. Then they gain a card. So when they gain a card, they, they have this future card deck, which a couple have been removed uh, based on the play board that they've got. Uh, but a future card now goes into their discard pile. And when they shuffle, it's going to be one that they get to draw. 
then they move a space, drop a space around, and then they're going to try and do their favourite thing. So, castle symbols, they've got one, the criminal is one, that's two, three, four, five, they're going to get to put three people in the castle. It's all their gold gone though. I don't have, I've been missing chat. The builder one's almost beautiful. The other one's called Steve. <laughs> oh, he's a card based one. No, I haven't played against that one. I've played against the castle one. I think I've played against the builder one. Paul's going to stream in five hours. What are you, you going to stream, Paul? I keep thinking it's uh, Pavlov's, Pavlov's dog, but that was last week, wasn't it? Or maybe that was two weeks ago now. Time's just a circle, isn't it? I've reached the scary point now where I can't remember games that I've covered. I was going through uh, a big archive that I downloaded and looking at, like, at first looking at the title of a game, Skyward? Oh, oh, yeah, of course Skyward, I remember that. And then uh, someone was talking about Hannah Makoji and I was like, I'm sure I did a playthrough for that. I did, like, nearly five years ago. <laughs> I just keep thinking it's Pavlov's, uh, Pavlov's dog on Fridays. That was probably, like, the first Friday I did a stream. Uh, the rule of moving, moving further with... Yeah, you can move further if you spend coin. Dominant Species Marine. It looks cool, I think. Um, I am pretty sure. Way too mean for me. Although, hey, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's a good solo game. All bets are off in solo. So, three more people in the castle. One goes there. One goes there. One goes there. Flip a deed or a debt, which it can't do. So it gets a virtue instead. There are no areas where it's doing any kicking out or any of that business. So that's just that. Yeah, he's not getting as far this time, although it's kind of early days still. So now, for me, whatever happens, the journeyman is coming out. So that's some trading symbols I've lost. I'm not too happy about that. But when he comes out, I get to hire a person from anywhere for free. And I get a virtue. Collision time. So I can hire someone from anywhere. We do have this acolyte, help you with a bit of churching and trading and some flips. If I am going to go for books, the bishop is still up there. I want to get a bit of corruption stuff from the bishop. I have really kind of gone into trading, haven't I? No, the bishop is quite expensive, and I would like some more flip things to flip. I'm going to grab the bishop, which gets me a debt. That's minus two points I've just gotten myself there. And I also, I've already had my virtue. Then we need to play a card. So, that's going to be... I don't want to play my thief, especially with a... with a couple of... things on the horizon. I would like to stay uh, as virtuous as possible right now. The lender... So I would have five trading symbols. I would be here, so I could grab this I could grab this book, which would get me a virtue which would be wasted though. I could move along. I don't have any church symbols up there. I could of course just play my trader and get a load more money. Yeah, that's the the problem, as Mark says. Trading, it's great having all of these symbols. Gets you things that you can then get points with. Apart from like flipping a load, uh, spending a load for flipping things is earning you some points. But you've got to have gotten them from something else. Trading is great, but it's not a uh, a points getting thing always. But at the moment, I can turn trading into churching. So hopefully, so if I came over here, I'd get ink pots as well, which would help me with more churching in the future. If I played my if I played my lender, I would move one space, and I would have two church things. It's just that the benefit from here is bad for me right now. Hmm. Whereas I wouldn't have enough symbols over here. I would have, yeah, I can't get any trading symbols from here. I don't have any inkwells. I would have two 
church symbols and I would need four. And going right round isn't the missionary up here gets has got a cross on it, but it's one, two, three money to get up there. Maybe that's the thing to do. I'd get some more money for doing that. No, but it's three to discard her for a symbol as well, so it cost me loads of gold. That is what it's there for. Ooh. Hi, Oliver. Of Tabletop Gaming's blog. Thank you for gaming's. <laughs> Tabletop Games blog. Thank you for joining us. I am uh, in a jelly of a pickle. I think this does seem big and wasteful. So I don't know if it should be done. So the lender moves me one space. Oh, that's even further because I can't... Oh, I can move down. Yeah. So I could spend one, two, three. Spend another three to discard the missionary. And then I would have three church symbols to get this book, which would get me four of those six back. So I would only have spent two. And then I've got a book. And that's something towards getting some points. That's what I'm feeling right now. So all of that cost me two, essentially. But I've got myself my first book, my blue book. And I can buy... Ooh, he seems like a, a decent buy. The Chevalier? Chevalier? I don't know. Uh, who has got a castle symbol on. And a trading symbol. And would let me discard a card. Three money. I, I thought I was rich, but... Look at what's happened to me again. I'm, I'm going to be uh, penniless. I've got two pennies after this. I'm going to hire him. So I get to discard a card. I'm going to discard my thief because I'm being a good boy. Yep, I discarded a card. I did an action. I recruited a card. Oh, the priest. Uh, same as the woodcutter, really. Oh, no, not the woodcutter. The one that got discarded. Uh, an inkwell is two crosses instead of just the one. I recruited a card. There is a collision. Collision time. So, for me, I get a coin and three deeds. One, two, three. And let's uh, see how far down I can have them with them still being on camera. Then, everybody else, if they've got a criminal or more, they get a debt. Oh, I don't want that. That's, it's lost him two points, but he's going to get to flip that. In no time. Uh, he has got a criminal, so he gets a debt. Okay. And then you reset both of them. Hi, Monica. Thanks for joining us. And that is my turn. It is AI time. You're just in time for AI time. So, card goes away. Card slide down. New card's out. It's going to be discard the card from where he is and get the ability which is reshuffle. He doesn't care about that when he would um, re well, readjust his cards. He never does that. When he would readjust, he gets a resource instead, and he's got no gold, so he's definitely going to be picking gold. Then, two spaces moved, doom, doom, and he's going to try and castle me. He's got one symbol, he's got two symbols, he's just got a gold, he's got three symbols, He's going to be popping two peeps in the castle. <laughs> hey, oh time, then hammer time, then Chico time. What does he do? Oh, yes. So he's in this segment. So forward, he'll get a gold. Move, move. And then he gets a gold back, yeah. He's happy with the gold. He's moved forward. He's put more people in. I need to do some castling. He's encroaching on my castling. I want to be here and do some castling. Uh, that is his turn. Go back over to me. And I didn't draw my cards. Hello. Here is my squire. Unfortunately, Bertha's getting pushed out, though. So I could do some churching while my traveller is still there. I would have five symbols so I could get two churches. It would move me one space so I could basically... I'd have to pay three to discard that card to be able to get this book and be able to hire somebody for free. Or 
Yeah, I've got I've got no um, gold, unfortunately. The trading for gold is one space away. Maybe that's what I do. Trading for gold's up here. I wouldn't be able to get any more symbols. I would have five, so I'd get myself two gold. Oh, like a bit of a waste of an action. I could do church in because. Yeah. I could church more easily. I do need some more virtue now. Because if um if I play my abbot over here, it moves me two spaces down here. It would be nice to collect a, a few of the same colour to get the bonus ASAP. But I can come down here. Every two trading is a church. Church, church, church. This costs three churches. I get a virtue, which is good because they've been reset now. And sets are nice of the books. You want sets of different colours. 16 points if you've got all four different colours. I'm happier with that as an action. And we've made use of the Traveller before he's gone away. He's been uh, useful twice. So I'm happy with that, I think. I didn't use the Acolyte. Do I want to recruit the Acolytes to get even more church in done? Ooh, maybe that's going to be the thing. Church in and castling. Yes. I won't have any money to do stuff with, though. But that's what the money is there for. I am recruiting the Acolyte. Welcome aboard. We are discarding the Trader. Because I am not going to give up on having a uh, castle symbol. That's it, that's it. Recruiting, recruiting, drawing, drawing. And I must have my cards that give me castle symbols at some point. They've got to be here somewhere. Okay, AI time. Marty's snoring. Having a nice sleep today. He's enjoying the heat of this room. Then... Okay, that slides along, that slides along, the whole board slides along. Then, nothing, discard the card from the place he's in, the ability is get a virtue. I want him to be corrupt. Then he moves three spaces, and he is going to transcribe manuscripts. No, he's not. He needs three symbols, he's got one, two, he's got no inkwells to boost that, so no. He is going to flip something. I gave him a debt that uh, <laughs> is going to help him with that. He gets a gold whenever he gets a resource, until he's got six gold. And then he gets another resource, which is going to be another gold. I sense some castles happening uh, in the future very soon. I'm sure I hired someone, Mark, that's got some more castles in, but I, don't, I just don't think they've come out in a good order for me. Bertha's got a castle on her. But yeah, no one else out here. That uh, beautiful castle symbol got discarded, didn't it? Okay, we've got to get in it. Yes, Cat Cam. He's helping us out. With, uh, with positive vibes, Marty is helping out. I'm cold too. Right, let's see. I should keep the squire about until I have something to do. I do have, look at the bottom of the board here, the squire would move me two spaces, unfortunately, because right here is a racketeer with a wild symbol that I could use. The only wild symbol out there, so I can't help with that. Maybe I should do some labouring because I've got so much stone. I could build a nice building. It'd be even better if I could boost it with someone's action, but I've got no gold to do that. So you get some benefits if you start some building. I can't just sit here doing trading. I think I'm going to play the labourer. Although I do need some money. The financer would get me some money. And then I could discard the labourer. Well, first of all, the traveller's got to go away, so I don't have those two trading symbols. I am near a space here, but I would have to move three, so I couldn't get money. For trading symbols. I think we'll do some building. I've got all of this stone just sitting around. I just don't think I've got any other people that help uh, out there. So I've got one building symbol and I need to move two spaces. So I need to be on the top to build. So I can either go one, two, or one, two, depending on which benefits that I want. 
Being here, I could either get myself a gold, which helps with castles, or hire a person for free. Or I could discard, I haven't got the money. Oh. It's just that there's nobody out here with building symbols on them. Or over here, I could either, oh, I can't do this one because he's taken it, but I could remove someone from my deck and get an inkwell. I think let's get a gold. Okie doke. So I've got one building symbol on my card. Two, three lets me build one of these cheap buildings. You can see the points that you'll get at the end of the game based on how many of those you've built. Five gets me a little farmer house building. Uh, more points, but I would spend all of my stone to do this. The benefits of them, uh, this one is when you hire a person, you can discard a person as well. Whenever there is a collision, if you have no criminals, you move up a virtue. Uh, your hand limit is, in is increased by one. Uh, this is when you move, you can choose to move one extra for free. Whenever you discard to use their benefit, it only ever costs you one, no matter how much it says on their card. And these ones are all for the main actions. You get two extra trading, one extra of the other symbols. But they're the most expensive ones. I can't afford those yet. I think a collision is about to happen and getting a load of free virtue would be nice. And I do have that card that really helps me with virtue. That could help me out. Or having more cards in hand, I think that would be a good thing. I'm going to go for cheap building. Pop it out here, grab myself a gold, help with some castling, and I've got the benefit now of that building. I can't afford to recruit anybody, I am very poor indeed. But I do shuffle my deck, I do not have any criminals, so I get a virtue. Yeah, Miko is a fantastic artist. He's also done the art for Imperium that's coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very soon. It's uh, it's still, you can still tell that it's his style, but it's uh, quite different from his usual style. Fantastic as it is. Oh, I've got a cough button, haven't I? There we go. That's why that uh, mute button's there. Oh, and I need another card. So no, still not got any. I've got the sculptor that would help me do some extra building now. And I do have a building symbol out there. Maybe it's going to be a bit of a building run for a bit. AI, what you up to? Got no criminals now. There we go. There's a criminal. A collision has happened. So now I wish that I'd taken that collision bonus. He gets a debt. He moves four spaces. One, two, three, four. Okie doke. He has collided with me. When, he, when you finish your movements in the same space as another player, a collision occurs. So for me, that means that I can rearrange my cards. I don't think I want to. I want her to be there, so she gets pushed out and I get her benefit. And if I'm going to be doing some buildings, I want the labourer to be on that left-hand side so he can stay in there and keep giving me his benefit. So I don't think I'm going to be taking advantage of that, unfortunately. Okay, he's moved. He's going to try and do his favourite thing, which is castling. He's got one symbol, two symbol, three, four, five. He gets to put three people in there. Oh dear. And he's already got a lot in there. One, two, three. Goes one, two, three. Oh, I should be showing you the castle as I'm doing this. He gets to flip something. The only thing he can flip is his debt into a resource which uh, he will choose gold, because he's just spent all of his gold. Then, is it when there's more than three people get kicked out? It's not when there's just three, is it? Uh, if there are more than three workers in any of these sections, because there are three in here now, so I could kick him if I get some people in there. But it's not looking likely, is it? Okay, that's, uh, that's his turn. So, oh, when does his thing get shuffled? Does his thing get shuffled at the... Oh, there's a collision first. Where is that? What are these things? That relates to his collision thing. 
Oh, is this whenever he gains a cord, he gets this ability? Rather than he just does it when he unlocks that building. Oh, I get you. I've been doing that wrong, then. Collision happens for him. He gets himself a deed and a resource, which will be a gold. And then, do I have a criminal? No, then I don't get a corruption. He gets reset. And then, is he... Is he drawing now? Or is it, is it going to be next time when he does that? <clears throat> yeah, okay. At the start of their next turn, they'll draw. Yeah, there's a lot of icons going on. Okay, so it's me. Back to the good stuff. What am I doing? Am I doing some building? So the sculptor, so the lender's going off no matter what, can't help that. When the lender goes off, I get to flip something. So I am going to flip my debt to give me some more positive points. And as any resource, I'll take a gold tentatively, but maybe I'm going to take that back and get a stone if it means I can get a better building. So the sculptor will move me three spots. One, two, three. I would have two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't need any more stone just yet. Although maybe I want more stone while the sculptor is sitting out there. Yeah. Yeah, instead of gold, I'll take stone. So I could do a five building now. Just permanently get two extra trading symbols, maybe. Move extra ones. Yeah, move extra ones. Let's have that. Oh, and then going back up to the board, my bonus can either be get a gold or flip a card. I think get a gold. Let's try and get somebody in the castle again. It hasn't happened for ages. Okay. I can't I've got no money still, so I can't afford to hire anyone. It is time for slide along and play a card, which means this is when they shuffle. Uh, they do have a criminal, so they gain a corruption. And their card is... Nothing. Gain a resource, which will be a gold, because they haven't got much gold. They move a space, and then they're going to try and build. They've got one, two building symbols, but with a stone, that makes three. They'll build their next one along here, so when they shuffle, they get a virtue. I think that's what that means. Am I right in that? Am I right in thinking that with their buildings? I've been just doing it when they unlock the building, but... I assume... It's when they do that thing. Yep, 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 yep. I assume it's when they do that thing, they get that bonus. So this goes on the leftmost space, it can't, so they get rid of a card, which they don't do. They instead flip a card, which they can do, they've got a deed to be flipped. And they get the inkwell in the middle here, they've formed a connection, so they get the same bonus as I would. Oh, do they do they not get do they get skull symbols when they shuffle? Where is it talking about shuffles? No, no do, do solos not get um, corruption and virtue in the same way when they shuffle? They do. Good. I've been doing that right then. But is you know these symbols here for their buildings? That, when they get this, that happens. Is that right? Rather than just they get that ability when it unlocks. It makes more sense that it's that way. I don't know why I was playing it the other way. So they've built. They've finished. Come back over to me. I should have an extra card. I've got all these trading symbols. When there is a collision, I get an inkwell. Okay, so I could do some more building. I could build a four, which isn't quite exciting enough, is it? I could build another three. So the abbot gets cleared off. I have my squire now. I could put 
see, the squire would move me two spaces. One, two. I would have three symbols, so putting two people in there would be okay. It wouldn't kick the AI out. It would give me a couple of virtue and get me closer to that middle. Hmm. What's going on over there? I could just play anything and then... The collision's not happening anytime soon for the peddlers uh, need to be in there. I could just play the trader, and then as I build up more trade symbols, I could maybe just take that in there, and then I just take the action to build a building. Ooh! This would be quite nice. So trader, move me one space. Over there. Build a building. Because I have the sculptor still. So if you look on my board, I've got one, two. I could get four. It's a bit unfortunate that I can't quite get five, but as, uh, as Mark's saying, a great building is the collision building, especially if I'm not going for criminals. Uh, whenever there's a collision, I get an extra virtue. So even if I've managed to get a bit of corruption somewhere, it could maybe push me back. So yeah, I'm going to build that. I think for sure I'm going to put it in this space. I could do a reshuffle, but I don't want that. Not a reshuffle, a, a readjustment of my cards on my board. But I'm going to pop this here. Because I get to flip something. <clears throat> I'm needing to cough so much. I'll get, I'll get to flip something. And I will get a virtue. So brilliant. So flip something has to be a deed. And then virtue over there. I can't afford to recruit anyone, still got no money, but the trader is out there now ready. Maybe if I play the peddler next time, I could get at least four trading symbols, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think that's it for me then. AI time. You are sliding along here, you're sliding down here. You're going there. Criminal gets a corruption. Oh, he's got two criminal symbols, so two corruption he gets actually. And then gains a card. When he gains a card, he gets rid of the citizen in the place that he is in, and that is going to cause him to reshuffle. When he reshuffles, he gains a virtue, but he has criminals. And so when you reshuffle and you've got at least one criminal, you get a corruption. Which, these spaces are good for me because I've got no criminals, and I'll get some virtue. Yeah, it's better if he's in these kind of middling spaces. Not that one, because I usually don't want to readjust the cards on my player board but yeah this one isn't going to gain him that much and it'll gain me some quite nice stuff although if he gains loads i'll get myself a deed let's see so he gained a card yep 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 then he is going to move a space and do his favorite thing which is castling which he's going to be able to do quite well one two three Four, five. Can't do eight, but that is going to be three more people in the castle. I'm letting myself down here. This is going badly. So he is here. That's going to be three people there. Still not kicked me out yet, but really gearing up for big castle turns. So one goes there, and that's going to kick off. One goes there. That goes there. Gets himself a gold. Then we do this one. Oh, no, and that's going to kick that one off as well. And that goes there. He gets to flip something. He's got nothing to flip, which means he gains a virtue. There's a collision. Then this one. You go there. You go there. You go there. He gets a stone and an inkwell. Oh, this is where it starts going terribly wrong. And then tier two. Oh, this is going to kick all of these off. And no, no, these, these don't move, these don't move, these don't move. These don't move like that. They, they stay where they are and just help you race to the middle. So he just goes into the middle, gets him any resource, which is a gold. But he is just geared up everywhere to get people straight to the middle from that whole bottom section. Okay. All right, so, uh, yes, Mark said, don't go sideways on the second level. There are no arrows to do that on the second level. Uh, I should have another card. Just keep, need to remember, I've got... <gasps> Chevalier, Chevalier, he's got a castle symbol, he moves me three, 
I could do some kicking out of people. If I was like here, popped a couple of people in in uh, there, they would go sideways and kick one of his people out there. Oh yes, as soon as you've got someone in the middle, you get the castle leader card. But hopefully we can take that away from him. Maybe, maybe. Then. Yeah, maybe it's not time to get money or anything like that. We could get the... Chevalier in there? So that's one castle, two, three. So I'd get to put two people in the castle. It moves me three. So I would go one, two, three. Yeah. I would get to put two people in the castle. Oh, we didn't do his um, collision, by the way. Back to his turn briefly. He gets a gold and a debt. And I get a virtue. And then reset his things. There's my virtue. I... If I played my squire first instead, I would only move two and be putting people in this section, which gets me virtue instead of the stone and the inkwell. Yeah. Because it would cause a collision as well. That's what I am thinking too. So I think, yes, I'm going to swap for the squire instead of the... Still don't know how to say it. Pop me back in that space. So I will have three people in here. Unfortunately, not going to kick any of his out, but it's still going to pan out well, I think. You go forward into there. And... Yeah, there's no more things to deal with. But I get two virtue, doop, doop, and that is going to cause a collision. And... Oh, you oh, play the same thing, but I get you. Keep the cards the same, but go one, two, three instead. Yes. Because it's better to have him in there first, because the sooner he gets kicked out, the sooner I get a flip. So yes, that's all there. Still got no money to think about any kind of purchasing. Whenever a collision happens, I should have had a virtue from his collision, actually, but I'm all the way over to virtuous, so it's fine. I get a gold at long last and uh, three more deeds. But that means that oh, there's like four deeds left and they were already having the most flipped debts. It's three to two at the moment, so I need to get some debts and flip them get loads of debts so that the points for flipped deeds comes around. But then I've only got one flipped deed. I've, just, I've got loads of unflipped deeds. Let's get some flipping done. So you're there, you're there, you're there. Draw a card. It's the Bish. And it is AI time. So all your stuff needs to get out of the way a little bit, mate. Slide along. What are you up to? He is going to Virtue Virtue. He is going to pop a space along and then he is going to try and transcribe manuscript. He's got one, two, three with his inkwell and for where he's moved on the board he can get a thing for that. That gets him a another deed. Uh oh. The second book. What is, uh, am I needed? Make sure uh, Rach isn't saying oh, I, I need you to do the thing. Uh, but, okie doke, okie doke, yes, 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 I've done all of my stuff, we're on AI time, aren't we? He's done his uh, books, he's finished, thanks Rach. Rach everyone, if what Marty's up to. Not, not even fussed, not even noticed that anything is moving around him. That is a good Marty cam though, that's a nice little Marty, Marty pose, you can see his uh, orange belly. He used to have a very spotty belly when he was a kitten. Still has, but, you know, it's spread out and stuff. It's not as uh, obvious anymore. Okie doke. 
Well, let's see. What am I going to do? I think while he's here... Hi, Danielle. <laughs> yeah, gotta keep the, the multicam up every now and then. I need to remember. So, at the moment... I want to get some money because there's a princess there with a castle symbol on her. She wants two money to get recruited. If I pop... Oh, my peddler should have been out all this time because of collisions. My, uh, my thing should be reset. I could have got two inkwells if he was out there. If I put my peddler in there... That gives me three, four, five trading symbols. It moves me two spaces, one, two. I'm just thinking, have a little breather turn, because that's going to get me five money. And then maybe while, the, while he's still in there, I would maybe have to discard her. But I would at least get to put some more people in over there. It wouldn't be very many. Yeah, I just don't want him to completely dominate the castle. Well, that's only five money, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the thing to do. The bishop wouldn't get me enough uh, book points anyway. Yes, I'm going to get myself five money. I could hire the stone cutter, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Not hiring, not discarding, no corruption, none of that. Draw a new card. It's my thief. AI. Slowly sliding along the table. Gets a virtue, moves three spaces. Then is going to castle. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So just going to do five, which is three people. He is running out of people, thankfully, but that's because they're all going to be in the middle. Where is he? He's up here. Oh, no. He is going to... Well, I'm glad that I got uh, my people out of this bit now. That way. That way. That way. Gets two virtue. Then, not that one, but this one. That one, he discards a person from where he is and gets the ability. That is going to be... This lets him... Uh, that's a virtue for him. So he's caused a collision. Then, this one. There, 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 gets a gold. There goes to the middle, increases his majority, gets another gold. This one kicks off again, right? There, 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 gets two more virtue, which is wasted, which is good. Oh no! And gets points. <sighs> points for the tears. The, yeah, the, I'm going to have to just be a little bit corrupt in a minute, aren't I? And um, get some debts to flip. Okay. That's all of his stuff taken care of. Collision. When there is a collision, I get a virtue. And he is going to get himself... He's going he's gonna to end the game. There's like one more round, isn't there? Oh, no. That's three. He's, he's completely won this again. Probably done worse than I did last night <laughs> against this uh, AI. He gets three deeds... If I've got a criminal, I get a debt. I haven't got a criminal. And that's that. So, back over to my sorry player board. Yeah, there's definitely no... Um, these, these are definitely not the same difficulty. <laughs> Maybe if you're the designer of the game. But yeah, this, uh, this has completely wiped the floor with me. I should have... Uh, Believe Paul and just uh, played against the builder. Because coming back to me, maybe it's just going to have to be the thief. I don't have... Because I can move to the princess, discard the princess to get someone in the castle. What's that going to do, though? 
Oh, there's more to do in the castle. He's going to uh, always choose to get rid of one of my people when there's four people in a space. He does right. I'm pretty sure he would, but I'll just check. He's always going to clockwise order. He'll always bump me, yes. So he bumped me from tier one, so I get two money for that. And he will bump me from tier two, so I will get a virtue and a gold. No, no, and a resource of my choice. Okay, let's think about this resource of my choice. Yeah, because this is my last turn. Uh, yeah, there, there are... You can, you can increase the difficulty as well. You can, so, the, you know, the, the future cards here, of which the, the AI this time hasn't really uh, put many of his extra cards in his uh, deck yet, you can start with some of these. You know, the, the more of these he starts with, the, the more difficulty he'll be. So you can up the difficulty that way as well, but it does seem uh, that, yeah, this is um, the way... It's, I thought it had gone better than uh, last night with him not doing as much, but then there's a certain point he just starts racing in the castle and I don't know how to keep up with him. Get better cards. Stop getting distracted by trading symbols. There we go. There's two tips straight away. Uh, so my last turn. I've got a resource to choose for being kicked out, but let's think about what my turn's going to be first. So I could just... Maybe it's worth just staying in this sector, putting people in the castle to kick his people out. There is no chance of me getting anyone into tier 3. I don't know if I would kick him out of anywhere. I don't think I would. Unless I can put three people in the castle. And even then, that's not really losing him many points and gaining me many. I'm geared up for a load of trading symbols yet again for some reason. Yeah, the thief is waiting there to get me a debt, which at this point would lose me points unless I can flip it. I've got so much money. I can get another castle symbol from there. Depending on where I'm moving, yeah, there's just loads of trading out there. I don't think there's many points on offer for any of this stuff. Oh no. So what is the plan? What do you reckon? Can you see anything exciting that I can do? So you like, yeah, you can you can tell it's a you can tell it's a hot tea when uh, when old Lemmy's back. What am I? Uh, banjo music. You're watching a bit with a bit of a delay. There was a sneaky tea delivery. That's one of one of the benefits of uh, the Easter holidays. Rach is here helping me out. Uh, yes, it gives me gold. Yeah, I, I don't know if you hear when I was saying that, Paul. I watched your playthrough and heard all the stuff about Builder is the easiest and all of that. And then I went, I was looking in the forums just to see if there's anything, you know, anything's changed or tips or whatever. Uh, and then saw in one of the threads Shem being like, well, they're all the same difficulty. So I thought, okay, let's just shuffle them up and play one. And then when I lost last night, oh well, it's just because I ignored the castle. It's just because I didn't um, get it completely right. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's because this one's hard. Okay. If I play the squire, I can get three symbols. I can get two people in the castle. Probably better to do a building. I'm not going to be able to do a building though. I'm nowhere near in a position to do that. I can get some more money. That's, uh, none of this is worth, is any of it worth points? No, leftover money and stuff isn't worth points. So no point having any of this. I didn't know the game was going to end, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten, um, I wouldn't have gotten money if I'd known this was going to be my last turn. Uh, Danielle, difficult to get into this one solo and recently sold it. I've been, <clears throat> I've been really enjoying it, but uh, yeah, I, I 
definitely haven't got the groove of a strategy. I'm pretty sure Rach uh, smashed me at it as well when we played uh, two player a few months ago. We're working on the Burn Cycle rulebook. Is Burn Cycle good, Paul? Will I like Burn Cycle? I still need to do Cloud Spire. Cloud Spire has been waiting so long. I have been meaning to do it. It's a scary one to do. Probably easier to do live, though. There will be Cloud Spire in the future. Leftover resources off point. Yeah, left, leftover resources are worth points for the AI, not for me. Hi, Aaron. Yep, <laughs> things, things have gone terribly wrong. Architects might be the easiest. Well, I think Paladins, I think I did decently at. But I think that has got easier, more easily defined difficulty settings. I, I, I remember winning, I think just scraping wins in Architects. And, um, yeah, so I, I haven't tried Architects, though. There are a couple of fiddly bits in this, yeah. There, there were, I remember my first playthrough of this was uh, pretty frustrating, but I haven't had that since. Solo Cloud Spy together, that would be good. You can help me out. Because I remember being kind of bad at that. Yeah, we should do some Cloud Spire stuff. Okay, last turn. I don't think it's going to mean that much. Some inspiration, Marty. Oh, he stopped showing his belly now. He's, he's in his usual position of turning away from the camera. Okay. So we can put two people in the castle. I can't... Unless this gets me all the way over to the priest. I've got money to get all the way over to the priest. I could... I can't get myself a book, though, because the book over there costs four. I would get two from the bishop, one from the priest. Not enough. Trading isn't going to get me points. Uh, I could flip something. Maybe that's something to do. Race around the board to this space. I'd only be able to flip one thing, though. <clears throat> and I'm not going to be able to get enough debt to... I could, I, I could equal... The AI, but I'm sure he's going to get to flip on his final turn. Building? I don't have any stones. I have the thief to give me a building symbol. Nobody else. Oh, the stone cutter could help me build, but that's only two symbols. That's not enough. I think the best we're going to get is going into the castle, but two people in there isn't. Yeah, the only way I'm going to have enough symbols for the castle. Oh, I'm, I'm getting a resource though, aren't I? I do have a resource, so I could go and get that blue. I don't think it would help enough, though. I could go and get that blue book if I chose to get an inkwell. If I chose to get a stone and discarded the stone cutter, I w could get myself three building symbols. It would be four points for putting the building out. I can hire or get rid of a person and they get a gold. That's not really many points. Going in the castle, getting a gold wouldn't help me. It would help me maybe... Yeah, getting a gold would help me still put two people in, but put the people in in positions where I would actually be able to move forward. But again, that's just getting resources. It's like three more points putting people in the castle. The resources aren't worth anything. Building my third cheap building is four points. <laughs> it is sad that we're <laughs> I'm down to the point of should I get three or four points this turn, my big final turn. Oh, but then playing the thief to do the build would negate those points because that's um, two minus points from the from the flipping from from gaining debts. If I, if I could gain enough debts to make this kick off. Uh, the dummy player would still beat me, but there are seven debts still to be taken. There's no forcing that. The book isn't going to help. I can't get a book from any other section. Oh, I could get... Uh, this, is a blue, this is a blue book as well. Getting another colour would be five points, and maybe the benefit of it would help me out, but now I can't do any of that. Getting more trading symbols. So I could, I could get three more trading symbols at the peddler here. So I've got 
three, four, five at best if I got the thief. Maybe this is the thing to do. I'll, I'll try this. So, pop the thief in there, get a corruption for every criminal symbol. Then I've got my, so that just moves me one space, so I'll have to pay a fortune. One, two, three, four, five. Although actually only four, because I get one for free. So I'd have to pay four to move there. I'm still just planning all of this out in my head. Four. Oh no, she only gets me the debt when she gets discarded though. I was just thinking I could get a debt and then flip it now with this ability. But I, I would have, so I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? I might as well have built a building. <laughs> it's all been the same. I'm just going to stick here now, I've done this. I've got, if I pay to discard him, that gives me eight trading symbols, which I can use to flip two things, and all I've got to flip is deeds, which isn't going to help me. And that's just going to have to be that, isn't it? <laughs> AI still gets another turn. Oh, that was a long turn. Okay, he gets to flip a card. He has flipped the fewest deeds, so he would actually flip one of them. Uh, it doesn't matter to him, he's still won debts. Then he moves two spaces, and he's going to get a book. He's got one, two, three, four symbols. Where he is needs six, so he's not getting that. He's going to try and do his favourite, castling, which he's got one, two, three, four, five symbols for. So he can pop three people in there. His last three people. And so where is he? He's here. Yeah, it's, it's such a foregone conclusion about three turns ago, wasn't it? Maybe more than that. Because now, forward, right, left, uh, the, and gets a stone and an inkwell. And then do all your tier ones. And he gets to flip something, he'll flip a debt. Gets a resource, which is a gold. Then this one kicks off again, gets a stone. And an inkwell. Do they keep going off again? Gets a stone and an inkwell. And then in his tier twos, he gets a gold for that. He's in the middle again. And he gets two more gold for those. And he's in the middle again. So yeah, just a load of stuff. And that is it. Okay, there, are, there is no... Um, there is no score pad in this. How's the microphone for Russell and all that stuff? Not Russell. Uh, I'm Tom. Uh, rustling and stuff on clothes. Is it all right where it is? Yeah, all right. Okay, let's just use the back of this pad. Uh, I can... I can put it in my area. There it is. They have an app for counting stores, do they? Or I should get that. Although, who doesn't love a lovely uh, score pad? Tom AI again. So last night it was 67 to 85. I didn't want to see my secret notes on uh, oh, that was going to be the plan for this week. I was wondering whether to do uh, Black Angel, but I did uh, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. <laughs> Let's see. So, get to the points page. So remember them all. So constructed buildings, I've got myself four from there and five from there, nine whole points. AI buildings has got five. Then workers in the castle. For the tier that they're in. So he's got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 points. I've got a few this time though. I didn't go in the castle at all last night. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
Transcribed manuscripts. Well, we have each got two different colours of manuscript. So that is four points each. Then castle leader card and cleric bonuses. I haven't got a cleric bonus, but the AI has got the castle bonus card, which is five points. Castle leader card. Unpaid debts are minus two points each. Neither of us have got those. Uh, then your deeds approved and otherwise. I've got three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen off of my deeds. Bot has got three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ha ha. Then. Only the Prosperity card has been revealed, so it's whoever has the most flipped debts gets the points. Uh, he's got four, I've got two, so he gets 12, I get four. And he gets... Oh, remaining silver and resources is a tiebreaker. But he also gets a point for every resource. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points. And so that is gonna be oh just a complete uh, just a complete washout for the, the AI over there. Uh just uh, yeah, not not typing on a calculator, just casually reaching over behind me for a bit. Uh he's got eighty seven, if that's right. And I've got myself nine yeah, mine could be done quite easily <laughs> in my head. Oh dear. So the AI actually did about the same as last time. I got 85 last night and uh, 87 this time. I, at least I did a load of buildings last night. At least, <laughs> at least I did something. I did a load of buildings and um, oh, I got a set of every book. Whereas, yeah, just too much mucking about trading stuff for nothing. Ouch. A 50 point difference. But hey, we can only improve from here, right? Is that right? Or else it's in here. Oh, this is all of my March, April video stuff. Anniversary week. Thinking of going back to some videos. Yes, you do not mess with the noble. Yeah, Marty always looks quite smug when he wins. He's, he's here this time. There he is. Yeah, pe people playing the game live should get uh, 51 extra points. Okie doke. I, th I think after last Friday's victorious Master Gallerist, kind of the, the best I could have hoped that playthrough to go, better than I've done for ages and ages and ages uh, in the Gallerist, <laughs> I think it's a fitting swing around to do possibly the worst I could have done at uh, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Just see what, uh, what Marty thinks. As usual, he is completely indifferent to any of the stuff that is going on. The Marty Cam, I should have like an ending Marty Cam thing where uh, I can I just have the both of us on the screen at the same time, but make me a little bit bigger. There we go, a little stretch. Get a little stretch there. I think my mic's maybe a little bit too loud. Hopefully it's not going all distorty and stuff. So there we have it. If, especially if you're watching back just later and you were only here for the, the <laughs> gameplay, I do apologise. It didn't go that well. But hey, you, you, saw, uh, you saw how things can go if, uh, if you play against the Noble in my accounts of the West Kingdom. Some ear twitches there. So that's, that's it for another week of streaming and stuff. I think, uh, well, we're at two hours. That's pretty good. Every stream I've done has been at least three hours, I think, apart from the very first uh, test one. So we'll be back next week with some more streaming. I don't know what games are going to be in it yet. Probably, I, I would like to come back to Viscount at some point, play against someone a bit easier for me. It's been a packed week this week. Uh, a video every day, kind of. Uh, so there'll be... There'll be some streams next week. I'm not sure what yet. In the build-up to the fifth anniversary, which is towards the end of the month, I'm thinking of going back to like a load of, like I went back to the gallerist that's been about five uh, years since I played through that. I'm thinking of like going back to some other games as well. Maybe Nations or something else like that. Games that I haven't played for years now. Magnuson probably not, I don't have it yet, but I will bear it in mind. Uh, Red Cathedral I need to get. Ginkopolis. If I, if I can play anything enough to kind of get a, get a handle on it enough. Because I, I would like to go back to Lisboa, especially since I got this Queen... 
um, promo thing. I would love to get uh, hold of the the scoring expansion for the Gallerist as well at some point. So I've got this that changes up uh, Lisboa a little bit. Yes, Paul. Paul is uh, conventioning this weekend. We've got tons of streams this weekend. Uh, so yeah, there's gonna, there's going to be some streams next week. I'm not sure of the days and stuff yet, but on Monday there will be a post about what videos are coming up. On the main channel, there is going to be an Anno 1800 recorded playthrough at some point. And on Patreon, as well as all of the other things and helping me out and all of those good things. Remember, I haven't said it for a while, have I? That all of this is made possible thanks to the Patreon. That's why I'm able to be here right now doing all of this uh, live stuff and the recorded stuff too. Uh, so if you can support and you would like to, it's, it's over there. You can see it. And it's in the description too. Uh, I don't know where I was before that. <laughs> Patreon, thank you everybody that supports. And for being here and watching and stuff as well. Marty, M Marty is dreaming of uh, a, a Lacerda marathon. So we, we've had a lot of uh, Lacerda recently. The Kanban EV came up and then I did uh, the Gallerist live stream. I haven't, I've never done a video for Escape Plan. Well, I did a prototype video for Escape Plan. Uh, I haven't uh, got a Kickstarter of Mikado de Lisboa. I would love one. Uh, oh, I just uh, I just grabbed this separately. Is that what it came with? I would really like to. I haven't even played that yet. Uh, no, I, I, as far as I know, I haven't been asked to do a playthrough of uh, On Mars Alien Invasion, but I'd be keen. Love me some Lacerda. And yeah, I want, I want to play uh, Mikado de Lisboa as well. Keep up with uh, all of my lacerda because uh, Escape Plan is currently the only gap in my uh, solo streak in doing all of his videos. Uh, but yeah, that'll be coming at some point. There'll be Kickstarters on their way whenever they decide to launch. There's, there's some videos uh, in the bag, but things have been uh, pushed back a bit. Uh, Dice Theme Park will be coming before the end of the month. Not quite sure when with that. Maybe there'll be like a Spirit Island stream? Maybe? Something like that? Thinking maybe a Lacerda next week and think of something else. There'll be a couple, there'll be a couple of live playthroughs. I'm going to try and keep it to a couple every week. I'm not going to be able to do uh, a video every day like there was this week. I don't think there's a Kickstarter one launching next week. But maybe one day you'll be able to do like, I'm thinking of doing something like Calico. I'd really like to play Calico again. And if I did something like Calico, I could probably do a couple that day. Just have a, a gap to reset in between them. And uh, yeah, we need, we need to have a, a breather from a Mage Knight stream. I suppose I can't just do that constantly as much as I want to keep up and improve with all of that stuff. So if you have suggestions for things, Agents of Smirsh, I wanted to do a playthrough of as well. <laughs> there has never been demand for that. That never gets many votes. Yes, there'll be another video with Paul at some point, possibly even uh, Cloudspire. Will, it will all be announced on the social medias, uh, in the Discord. If you're on Patreon, uh, it, I, I have uh, figured out that I should be doing YouTube posts as well, so the picture will get posted there with all the coming up stuff too. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the more... The, the more and the, Patre the Patreon uh, is... Uh, seems to be nicely uh, growing. The, the live streams seem to be uh, getting nice, nice views when they're here and nice views when uh, they when they finish as well. So for, for the foreseeable future, and I'm loving them as well, it's uh, it is a, a real joy to just be playing a game and having some interaction while it's happening and uh, just know that it's up now and it's there and it's done and there isn't at least double or triple the time I just spent filming it, listening to myself over and over again as I edit it. But yes, there'll be more stuff. It will be great. Class fight with Paul might wreck wallets. Yeah, well, I've noticed that, well, I probably saw, was it Paul on social media? I saw someone on social media uh, tweeting about all of that uh, new shiny Cloud Spy stuff. I've got kind of the, the basic original stuff, which I do like. I need to be better about keeping up with things. I never get rid of these things. They were all just kind of hanging around saying, you need to play through all of this stuff. But hey, the, the live things are how I'm starting to catch up with some of these things. Like, like Viscounts of the West Kingdom has been waiting for... It's probably... We were in this house, so it must have been like December or something that I got this and we played it. And it's taken like four months for a playthrough to happen. Just because 
never quite got enough votes, can't do very many a week, still got the uh, normal job and stuff aside from this, but thanks to it being live, boom, here it is. So hopefully uh, there will be some more stuff. Yes, I should definitely do Cloudspire so I can stop feeling so terrible about having not done a video for it yet, but I'm scared. We'll do well though. Okay. I will go now. I will see you at some point next week. Probably usually Wednesday and Friday are the days that things happen. I haven't got Red Rising. I uh, I haven't been on the... I know Jamie cycles people around, so it's, uh, it hasn't been some kind of blow up or anything. But I haven't been on the, the early list for Stoneway Games for a while now. I think since Tapestry, which is a shame. I, was re I, I love being on there. Uh, have have reviewer copies of the normal thing gone out yet? No, I know that people that um, were Stone My Champions got theirs. Is that normally when review copies go out? I don't know. I have I haven't got one anyway, and I have I have got my my homework. Is that how do I position that? I've got my homework ready. I haven't started it yet, but uh, I've just finished the other books I was reading. So that is uh, that is on the docket for when uh, if if eventually. Uh, I do play Red Rising. If I eventually get a copy, then I will know what it's about a little bit. Uh, UK folks have gotten it. Yeah, I think the champions have got it. Have the reviewer people got it? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe have to buy one when, uh, when things get out. Who knows? I don't know what the situation is. I don't know. Most, most people kind of understand that some, sometimes it just takes longer to do things. I know ide ideally... I would have a playthrough of everything just straight away as soon as it comes out, play it, film it, it's done. That would be fantastic, especially, you know, if this was my full-time job and stuff and I could just keep churning all of that stuff out. Just, you need to play things more than once, although the option of having live streams where I could learn a game like I did with Mage Knight at the same time as streaming it is, uh, is exciting. But yeah, because I, I know as a, I was, well, I, I broke my shoulder and then moved house. Uh, so, um, Tapestry Expansion and what other expansion? Wingspan Expansion were a bit uh, more delayed than usual, but they've all been uh, filled now. So I don't think it's that. Hey, we'll see. Yeah, time will get us all eventually. There's never enough time to do all of this stuff. There are, well, not too many games coming out because I always want to see more, but there are tons and tons and tons of games coming out. And uh, that's why it's exciting to get to go back to some of these things like Mage Knight. In these live streams but if you want to see something let me know i'm all over the social media well i'm not really on um well if, if you message me or tweet me or something i will see it generally i'm not really on there lately I'm trying to cut down i'm trying to this this is my uh, this is my exposure to the the social side of things at the moment yes so little time so many games we'll get to as many as possible eventually though oh imperial would be a good one to do just look at these massive boxes let me know what you want to see in a live stream. I will let you know on Monday what I am doing next week. There'll be at least a couple more live streams. There'll be at least a normal video. And we're gearing up and getting excited for the fifth anniversary. If you can and you want to, join the Patreon. Like, subscribe, comment, tell people about the channel, whatever you would like to do. But most of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me for this, whether you were here live or you've watched it back later. Social media hasn't been a very fun place to be. Yeah, I've, I've found that it's, it's, it's been a, a bit of a relief being off it for the last uh, couple of months. But yes, it has been a great week. Thank you for watching any of it. And I will be back next week with some more, hopefully, great stuff. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.